Hi, I'm Caitlin, and this is Book Chats, and welcome to Nonfiction November. These are my intermediate recommendations for science nonfiction books. If you've been watching my series on nonfiction recommendations, you'll know that I have been giving beginner slash introduction, intermediate, and advanced recommendations, as well as my own personal TBR for various subgenres within nonfiction books. This is my video of intermediate book recommendations for the science subgenre within nonfiction. Three books that I recommend as intermediate. The first is a book I love, The Poisoner's Handbook by Deborah Blum. This is a book that is both about the science of poisons and about the development of forensic medicine in Jazz Age New York. The big through line of the book is the kind of development of the coroner's office as a sort of a legitimate, not nepotistic, not this dude that gave me money on my campaign, but a legitimate department that can research and use science to determine the cause of death for people. At the same time that this was happening, it was prohibition. There were a lot of things going on around that. And just regulations were not the same as they are now. And a lot of people just kind of got poisoned because things weren't as safe then. Each chapter is centered around a specific poison and talks about the science behind that poison, how it kills you, different cases of it, around that time contemporaneously. At the same time, there is a through line story of this establishment of this coroner's office in New York City. And there is also kind of a through line of some cases that they're working on that are not necessarily these specific poisons in each chapter. This book is part history and part science, but the science is actually pretty heavily science. So I often hesitate to recommend it to people as a straight history book because I think you really get a lot more out of it if you are interested in the science of these poisons. I think also it's interesting because if you find specific poisons or incidents they're talking about very interesting, there's definitely other nonfiction you could branch off from that. So this, this book, The Poisoner's Handbook, was the second book that I read that talked about the radium girls, women who were pointed, painting radium on clocks and watches and ended up being poisoned by the radium that they had used. And now I have not read it yet, but there is a book specifically just about those radium girls and it is called The Radium Girls. And so if you're reading The Poisoner's Handbook and you're like, wow, this one chapter about radium was fascinating, you can go read about The Radium Girls, you can go read more about Marie Curie, you can, if you're reading through and you think that everything around prohibition is fascinating, there's many, many books written about prohibition from many different sides that you could definitely go off of and read. There's also a whole chapter that talks about leaded gasoline. And I, since I had first realized that all gasoline was labeled as unleaded or diesel, had always wondered kind of like what's leaded gasoline versus unleaded gasoline. And reading this book, I understood suddenly why we had banned leaded gasoline. And if you had wanted to, you could probably go off and read more about that. So I love The Poisoner's Handbook. I think it is a great book. It has a lot of general kind of topics and all of this poison as well, but it is a little heavier on the science than everything I put in the intro category. And so that's why I put it here in the, inter the intermediate category, but I highly recommend that you read it. The second intermediate book I'm going to recommend is The Emperor of All Maladies, A Biography of Cancer by Siddhartha Mukherjee. Siddhartha Mukherjee is probably one of my other like top science writers out there. Um, and he writes medical kind of stuff and he wrote this amazing first book that won a Pulitzer Prize and totally deserved it that is what exactly what it says it's a biography of cancer so he goes back to the earliest mentions of cancer in, in history and all the way to when he was writing it he looks at how we recognize cancer how we treat cancer how treatments have changed different treatments and how they affect things and it's just a wonderful and amazing look at this thing that affects like one in two men and one in three women before we die and i find this book to be very interesting very compelling but again is a little more technical on the science side of things and it's medical science and so i think to get the most out of this book you have to be willing to read the science and I think that that is easier on audiobook. I have read this book twice and both times I read it on audiobook. It's about 20 and a half hours that way. It's really well narrated and I highly recommend it. The third book I'm going to recommend as intermediate is probably the most accessible scientifically of these books. And I debated whether or not to put it 
in kind of the intercategory. That is Grit by Angela Duckworth. She has a TED talk you might have seen where she talks about her research on grit. This is a book that I read because I was worried I didn't have grit and I'm still not sure I do. But what I thought was interesting about it is she talks about her kind of research and work around grit, but also how it applies more to society and how you can apply it to yourself and how grit, a big idea behind grit is people with grit tend to have a more flexible mind uh, view or they have a more flexible worldview about the capabilities of your mind. And I thought that was really interesting. And I think I put this in the intermediate category because I think the parts of it that are maybe more sciencey are the parts that you should dig into and the ideas that she has around challenging yourself to think do I have this mindset that intelligence is fixed or do I have this mindset that intelligence is fluid um, and these kind of things she says around grit I think if you think about them very scientifically and kind of push yourself to analyze it in your own life that I think maybe you'll get more out of the book. So for this category I'm actually going to make a whole separate video about advanced because I really believe that for science the advanced category is to read scientific journal articles to read the journal articles and scientific papers out there that are being published. If you really want to dig deep into science, that's where you're at. That's where the cutting edge things are. If it's been written into a book and then you've taken the time to read it, it's probably not the cutting edge of science anymore. And so if you're really serious about scientific nonfiction, you should just be reading the journal articles. Now, journals aren't always easy to access, so I am making a whole separate video where I talk to you guys about accessing journal articles through your local library, and so look out for that. But the one book that I thought of that I think would be in the advanced category, and this is like a very nerdy, like word bookish person type of science, is a book that came out earlier, th earlier this year called Nabokov's Favorite Word is Mauve. And I say that this book is kind of the only one I really would put in that advanced category for science because each chapter felt like it was a scientific paper. And the conceit is that the author of, of Nabokov's favorite word is mob is using kind of statistical analysis of word frequencies to answer questions using um, different book databases. And I really, really enjoyed it, but it is like real nerdy. <laughs> so if you're up for statistical analysis of word frequencies and a whole book about that, Nabokov's favorite word is mauve. Uh, I think each chapter can be read completely separately. And it took me a while to read because of that, because there was nothing really compelling pulling me through the book. It was just that I'm a nerd and I was interested in finishing it. Keep your eye out for my video about accessing journal articles online through your library and keep your eye out as well for the other videos that I have recommending different books in the nonfiction subgenres that I'm covering. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, and especially let me know if, if you have any suggestions for science nonfiction books that you would consider to be at the intermediate level. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!